Sometimes, when hacking against CICD or continuous integration and continuous deployment infrastructure, you can't poison the pipeline directly. You can't modify a, the Jenkins file or the GitHub Actions workflow or anything to immediately gain code execution or leak secrets or gain confidential information, but you might be able to indirectly poison the pipeline. And we're going to see a great example of that in this video right now, playing more against the CICD GOAT capture the flag environment. Let's dive in. So over here on my computer screen, I am inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine, and I have spun up, as I have with all of the other previous videos, all of the Docker containers with Docker Compose to create and craft on the fly the CICD GOAT, or the deliberately vulnerable CICD environment. I'm logged into their Capture the Flag framework, over hosted on localhost 8000, logged in as Alice, with the password Alice, as we know are the credentials for this game, and now we can go take a look at the next challenge in the easy category, as we're still working through these, let's move into the Mad Hatter challenge. It says Jenkins file is protected? Sounds like an unbirthday party. You can use your access to the Wonderland Mad Hatter repository to steal the Flag 3 secret. Okay, so let's dive into this thing. I'm going to go take a look at those repositories over on GitT. I believe that's hosted on localhost 3000 as the ports here. And in the Wonderland organization, we do have a couple repositories that are pertinent to us. I see Mad Hatter pipeline and Mad Hatter on its own. So off the bat, the most interesting ones sounds like the Mad Hatter pipeline. So let's go jump into that, see what we have here. And there is really nothing else in this repository other than the Jenkins file, which seems a little bit odd, seems a little bit weird. But if we go ahead and take a look at this Jenkins file, it does normal CI CD stuff, right? Hey, we fire up the pipeline. I'm going to zoom in crazy, crazy big here so you can see this. We got any agent working with the environment with a couple stages to install the requirements. Hey, use a virtual environment with Python, install all the dependencies, do some linting on the source code, take a look at the whole project, clean it up, run our unit tests, and then ultimately make. So we build out some other binaries, and that includes the flag. You can see it's passed in some credentials, so with credentials, kind of as we've done in the previous video, but probably a better syntax in the Jenkins file to actually include that here. We've got the flag three provided with the username included as a variable. Same thing with the password, which is actually genuinely the flag. So it runs make with a shell command. Note that sh prefix here, and then we just clean up and I don't know, do whatever workstation post stuff that we need to do. So this honestly, at least on knee jerk reaction is where we want to make some mischief here. We'll go ahead and clone this repository. I'll hit the download or copy link button and I'll get back to my terminal where I might go ahead and just simply git clone my mad hatter pipeline dot git. I'll need to log in as the Alice and the Alice, modify those usernames and passwords here. I'll jump into that directory, and now we have that Jenkins file that we just saw. Now, I'll fire this up in Sublime Text in my text editor here, and this is exactly the code that we were just looking at. But in the previous videos, we modified one of these stages inside of the pipeline here to run code or do something different. In this case, we wanted to potentially leak out the flag that was a secret credential, but well, what's to stop us from doing that here right now? Rather than running make and piping it to true to make sure it succeeds, what if we just simply tried to echo out that environment variable in bash here, so the dollar sign prefix, and then just using the surrounding curly braces for good practice, we'll pipe that to base64 so it doesn't get masked in the output of the pipeline, and then let's try and make those changes. Let's save this file and push it to the repository and see if a new pipeline or action will run, kick off, and then we could just get the flag from that console output within Jenkins. Let me try to git add that Jenkins file. Let me try to commit, or I say displaying the flag, save that, and then I'll try to git push. Need to supply the credentials one more time because we're working over HTTP, but oh, it, it didn't work. Uh, pre-receive hook declined is the error message that we've got, and we can't push these references to that repository. Um, user permission is denied for writing. Okay, so we, are we not allowed to write to that? Are we not allowed to write to just the main branch? Is there branch protection here that's preventing us from doing that? Uh, what if we just try to make out like a new branch? Like, let's get checkout tack B to craft, craft and create a new branch, call it poison, cool, I, I don't care, whatever name that we want. And then, of course, our Jenkins file, we make those changes, save this again, uh, 
And then can I git add the Jenkins file now in this new branch? How about that? Didn't even, didn't even want to do that. Well, let me just push those changes. Okay, we'll need to go ahead and set that upstream. Thank you, Git, for giving me the answers here. And then everything that we've just done still won't let it happen. So, okay, for whatever reason, we cannot make changes to that branch. We, to, we cannot write to the Jenkins file and modify the pipeline directly. But what was in that other repository? Right, this was Mad Hatter Pipeline in its own repository. And let me go take a look at what Jenkins has actually. Uh, that was in localhost, what? Uh, that's 3000, I think? No, that's git t. So 8080 was Jenkins. And I've logged in, I believe that password was again, Alice and Alice. Now, if I go to the dashboard, what do I have running here? There is a Wonderland Mad Hatter. There is a repository present for what we'd like, but there are no pipelines running. Nothing has changed. So even attempting to push or do any of those, it, it wouldn't happen. Um, let's try to go use the current or actual and active Mad Hatter repository. Do we have permissions with this? Now, I'm going to ask you all, if you don't mind giving me a, leaving the comment or just letting me know, how can I find out actually what the branch protection setting is. When it's a repository that my user doesn't have access to, how could I have figured that out other than just trying it as I just did with that pipeline? Uh, because I wanna be able to get the flag here and I wanna make these changes. It looks like we're up against Yagmail, yet another Gmail or SMTP clients, but uh, I'll probably have to go ahead and get clone this and see what more damage I can make here. Um, but actually, wait a second, remember, <laughs> Maybe I just said the funny word. If I am taking a look at the Jenkins file in the pipeline repository, this is what ends up having an action or job or stages ran, tasks to end up running here. What this originally was going to do, when we have the flag sort of in memory or within the context here, we ran the make command. So what's to stop us from just running inside of the make file here, if we have permissions in this repository, could we retrieve the flag like that? That sounds like a worthwhile road to go down, and especially for finding the flag within this capture the flag environment. But hey, actually, uh, on that note of CTFs, if you don't mind, I'd love to give a little bit of love to our sponsors, because we're gonna be doing something super duper cool with capture the flag. If you aren't too familiar, let me give some love to Sneak and their upcoming CTF 101 workshop. Capture the flag is one of, if not the best way to learn cybersecurity and gain new skills, to even get promoted and advance your career. You can learn all about different vulnerabilities, exploits, and have fun all along the way. But if you've never played a CTF before, it can be a bit scary when you're getting started as a beginner. So if you're just learning the ropes, jump into Sneak CTF 101 Workshop on March 30th, 2023. The party's getting started at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and trust me, it is a ton of fun. I stopped into their past CTF 101 workshop in November of last year, and I got to check out all the sweet stuff that people were learning about, prototype pollution, server-side request forgery, and so much more. You'll learn how to solve CTF challenges from different Jeopardy categories, like binary exploitation and web application security, and the Sneak team will walk through live, step-by-step -step demonstrations. You'll go hands-on to solve CTF challenges, and you're encouraged to chat with the Sneak team for live support and ask any questions all along the way. So join the Sneak CTF 101 workshop on March 30th, 2023 at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's all totally free and all online. You can register right now with my link below in the video description. Huge thanks to Sneak for sponsoring this video. Okay, so back in action here, we know we have two repositories that we're working with, the original Mad Hatter and then the Mad Hatter pipeline that we do not have write access to. However, there is a make file present inside of the original Mad Hatter repository. So maybe we could go ahead and copy this and go ahead and git clone the original Mad Hatter repository. We'll try that. Looks like again, we need our credentials. 
pull down the repo, and now we could try to make changes inside of this make file. Because if I take a look at that, and this is all that we had to work with, just a simple who am I command, which probably would have been the target that ends up being ran by this make file. And it does this curl to whatever Wonderland host with an authorization token of the flag. Okay, so at least enough, a little bit of a breadcrumb or some info that could clue us into, okay, this is really how we might be able to track down the flag. But I'm curious, okay, can we just now try to echo out the flag variable that we know is going to be within memory, within the context of the stage that's ran, and then we'll pipe that to base64 one more time. And let me bring that way back up to the beginning of the file, uh, so that's proper syntax here. But again, the Jenkins file in the whole other repository running this pipeline, we know that this just tried to run make and then validate that it actually ran with with the true kind of Boolean logic there. So it will execute make, but we do not have control over the Jenkins file. We do, however, potentially have control over this make file. So we sort of indirectly manipulate what happens within the pipeline. Let's save this, make these changes. Let me try and git add that make file. Git commit indirect pipeline poisoning. I can type. And then we'll go ahead and push that. Does that work? We know that I need the Alice, the Alice. Success? No errors, no red, yeah, cool, no blood. Looks like that works. Process one reference in total, and fingers crossed that works. I don't know if I need to create a pull request here or, or whatever will end up triggering this uh, job, but I do see my commit. I hit control shift R on my keyboard to refresh with no cache. And there's my 30 seconds ago commit. Looks like that's going to end up running. Make file now has my commit there. And all that will do is echo out the flag into the pipeline console, base64 to avoid masking it uh, as some jobs might end up doing here. So now let's go back to this Wonderland Mad Hatter repository in Jenkins. Let me control shift R. Um, do I have a build history of anything actually happening? Not yet. I might need to go ahead and create a pull request. And let's actually make this change in, again, another branch so that we can see if we can trigger a job to run. Uh, so let me switch to a new branch called poison. Again, I'll try and add that make file. Can I actually commit that? Will that let me happen? No, I already did that earlier. Let me try and push that. Let's do another git push set upstream origin poison as we've done before. Let's do Alice. Alice, and now we should have the new branch that's created. Let's hop back over to the repository. Let's see if I control shift R. Ooh, okay, cool. New pipeline action actually running. Let's go check out Jenkins. Let me hit uh, control shift R here to refresh that page. And now I do see, hey, the branch that I created here under poison, it did seem to run. So let me click on this. Let me see what the logs are here. And you can see, hey, it looks like it's actually running. Looks like it fired off. And there is this make stage, right? That ran for a little bit of time. Looks like it succeeded. We can go ahead and take a look at the logs here. And there it is. Cool. We ran the command to echo out the flag environment variable piped it to base64 and now we have this value this output here copy that to my clipboard let me see if i can go ahead and pipe that to base64 tack d to decode and there is our flag three there is a acd6 blah 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 all we've done was manipulate the pipeline we've changed it indirectly by modifying the make file that the actual job runner that jenkins file ended up executing. And with that, we have solved another capture the flag challenge just to learn a little bit more about some of that CICD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous delivery, however you want to interpret that acronym. Super cool stuff in that sort of DevOps security world and sense here. But hey, if you're having fun with these, if you are enjoying these, please let me know. Would love to see your own input, your own comments in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. Uh, and hey, please take a look at what Sneak is up to for their upcoming CTF 101 workshop. If you're loving capture the flag stuff just like this, I bumped the microphone. <laughs> but hey, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.